that Holmes and Redgrave are going to surmount the first hurdle of this enormous task and qualify for their first final of these championships. And Great Britain are already in three finals. We've reached three in Los Angeles four years ago, and it looks as though our rowers, our oarsmen, are going to perform even better here in Seoul. And the crowd around me now are just beginning to applaud Holmes and Redgrave as they come towards the finishing line, but there's a bit of a spurt being put in. There they are. They are still heading for that electronic line. The judges away from me are considerably helped these days. It's still Holmes and Redgrave leading in lane four. And they're going to get there all right. They're just easing up a little now. They know they've got the race won. They will not be overtaken. But coming through on the near side in second place are the Belgians. It looks as though Alain Le Villon and Wim van Belgen are going to come in second. Great Britain first and it's Belgium and East Germany for second and third but the good news here in Seoul is that Andrew Holmes and Steve Redgrave have so safely negotiated the coxless pair they're through to the final in first place Listen, uh, and they know not to work uh, too well together because uh, rumour has it they don't like each they other work very much wonderfully well mind. together they mm. work well together um, but you don't have to be uh, lovers to go well in a boat <laughs> so they've got their own lives and they go separate ways after they've worked <laughs> Um, but they're a fantastic combination. Right, I'll remember that. Don't have to be lovers to work well in the boat. Thank you for that, Dan. <laughs> right. Again, final. They steer for themselves. Holmes and Redgrave very much in action. Our star duo. This is with the Cox, Mr. Sweeney. And this is without him, and they can still do it. Probably a little faster. And um, through they went. No problem for them, but a bit tighter for the Cox four. USA continue to lead, but after that it is beginning to tighten up. Yugoslavia nearest to us, West Germany on the other side of them. The Soviet Union beyond the Americans and Great Britain battling in lane one on the far side. We are going to have a finish. The Brits have put in a tremendous burn since the 500 meter mark. On the far side, that's Great Britain. Coming almost to the bow of the Soviet Union. The angle will change and now we may see. The Yugoslavs have come right back into it, and it is going to be a tremendous finish. The Americans may not even win it. Yugoslavia have come forward, and I really wouldn't like to call that without seeing the photograph. Well, it's certainly taken a lot out of everybody. The United States know they've been in a race after leading for a good 1,800 metres. Suddenly they came under tremendous pressure. And now let's look at the crucial replay. Great Britain at the top of the picture, the Yugoslavs on the near side, the Americans in the middle, and it's a question of whether the West Germans got in. Well, I do believe Britain may have won it. I do believe they did. We're in six men's rowing finals over the weekend. Steve Redgrave and Andy Holmes have taken British rowing into a new era. Their achievements over the last few years have given the sport a real shot in the arm. And their ultra-professional approach extends to the boat they've brought with them, which has carried them to two finals. There's a great deal of fascination down here at the Han River Regatta course about the actual boat that Steve Redgrave and Andy Holmes have been using. Well, here it is, and with me is Britain's director of rowing, Penny Tutor. Penny, for a start, the boys had to make a late switch just before they came, didn't they? Well, they were due to have two new boats, and we had this idea of a new rudder in our minds beforehand, and so we built the new rudders into the new boats. But this is the more well, conventional type? Yeah, this is one of their older boats that they also brought with them, and this is a standard rudder, which obviously is proud of the hull and creates more drag. Right, well if we can move across then to the new boat and if you'd just like to talk us through it and what exactly is different about it and what effect well, it might have. We haven't yet filled this hole which will be done before they race the final but that was where the old rudder was which would have been proud of the hull here and here you see this one sits in absolutely flush and when they're not actually using it there's far less drag when you use a rudder, it creates turbulence anyway, which slows you down. So the crew that can go straight without using the rudder will have less turbulence, therefore less drag. And if they're not using it with us, there's absolutely no drag at all. Whereas if the rudder was still sticking up here, clearly that's going to slow them down. The problem is that Redgrave and Holmes have doubled up for the first time. They're going for gold in the coxed and the coxless pairs. But can they really do the double? It's a very possible chance, yeah. It's going to be very, very tough. Um, the Romanians in the coxless pair are going very, very well. Um, they gave us a very hard race last year at the World Championships. And the Italians in the cox pair 
uh, reigning Olympic champions, reigning world champions, they're going to be very tough to beat. Like two semi-finals in one day seemed cra crackers, really. Yeah, it did seem crackers after we did it, actually, but uh, we got through. We made the two finals, which is what we wanted to do. We always knew that was going to be the, the hardest day out of all of them. Um, really, it's just trying to get through the next race, trying to win it as easy as we possibly can with less effort, which sounds stupid to try and win an Olympic gold medal with the least effort, but uh, that's what we've got to try and do.